back and if you're just joining in we are talking about the life in Christ and you're watching CMTV right there you can see the logo on your screen and I'm your host in this program Reverend Betram Ginyu Senior Pastor of Eternal Life Ministry we are talking about the endangered breed of Christians <laughs> there's danger I'm receiving your prayer request because I'm going to be praying with you. If it is sickness, if it is a concern, if it's a difficulty, I want to pray with you where I can counsel you. I want to counsel you. I want to share the word of God with you better than just our encounter through TV. I've been sharing with many and their lives have been blessed. And I've been saying time and time and again, I'm compiling the testimonies. Those who have to come on TV, they have to, some have to travel from distant places, from the north, from the northwest. All who have been blessed in and out of Boya, those who are here, we're going to have a time on TV when we are going to share together. So I want to read, there is a contribution here. Remember, you can send your prayer requests, your contributions, and your questions through the number displayed on your screen. If you want to get the previous broadcast, you can also text through WhatsApp, regular SMS as well. So I'm having a message here. It's Tyson from Boya. I just want to say thank you very much for the message. Tyson, God bless you. It's an encouragement from you, and this is your contribution. Someone is getting to be sure that we are actually live through your message that you're sharing. I want to thank you for sharing that message, and I pray that because of your participation, let there be an invitation of angels to also participate in your quest in life. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right. We are going further. I wanted to talk about the course of the endangering. What is the cause of the endangering? We are talking about the endangered species. We just shared on Matthew chapter 7 from verse 13, from verse 12 right to verse 13, that is talking about not broad is the way to destruction and many go by it, but narrow is the way to life and only if you find it. And we are saying the love of God, all things work together for good only for those who love God. I'm receiving another message here, Bonsoir. Please write conclusively. Don't test if it is life or not. Write and let me get your contribution. Bonsoir. And where I'm going to respond to you with your prayer, for your prayer requests, respond to your questions and your contribution. So we were talking about Matthew. And I said, all things only work together for good to them that love God. To them that love God, not to them that God loves. God loves everyone. But the love of God, Apostle John said, we know that we love God when we carry out his commands. So your love for God is not how much you feel like you love God. How much you feel like you love to go to church. You love to read the Bible. You really like to live the Christian life. That's not the love of God. You judge your love for God by your response to God's word and how much your life is a living sacrifice. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Love is an expression. It's a nature then, but it's only revealed by expression. You can't love by feeling. You love by gesture. That's why young boys and girls judge love by feeling. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. Mature people don't judge love by feeling. So God so loved the world that he gave. And if you think that you love God, you so love God that what? You are still mingling with the world. So the first cause of this endangering, I don't want to center it on spiritual efficacies. Our lives as human beings, relational beings, we relate from one-on-one, -on -one, husband and wife, two people in love, two people in a relationship, not just husband and wife, brother and sister. We relate from two people together, psychologically or physically. When we become more than two, it's already a community, a group. When we become more than two, it's already a group. We relate at group level. When the groups are many, it becomes a community. And that's when we have villages. When the communities are many, we start having the larger settlements. And then we get to have nations. When the nations are many, we get the continent. And then we have the world full of the continents. 
the behavior of a people, oh, before I go to the behavior, our life from personal to couple to group is affected by our spiritual inclination, the spiritual atmosphere, the spiritual psychology we have internally and externally followed by the policies which is now what we call policies in a large settlement we call it government policy but if two people are together relating the policy of their relation will determine the strength of their bond and the direction of their psychology spiritual psychology and mental psychology and physical way of life those are the first two dimensions that affect man's well-being. Next is followed by economic riches. What you have that is able to sustain you and your society, how rich you are. And this is one of the reasons we have always had war in history. Somebody is saying, good evening, sir. I'm really blessed with your message thank you very much eric eric is in mile 14 eric thank you this is not your first time for of watching it's more than once and i'm happy you are responding so we are talking about what governs a people and what affects a people's inclination to certain way of living the third we spoke is economic now the education of the people, their philosophy, is what is entwined in what we call culture, socio-cultural frame of a people. When we are talking about revival, when we are talking about you being active spiritually, every bit of this thing affects your life in Christ and affects your spiritual stamina and stature. Your spiritual psychology, your philosophy of life, the policies that govern your relationship with one another affect your spirit man. What you have in possession when you have enough to eat, enough to drink, is called economic riches. Your culture, the societal culture, not just the philosophy. You can have what you think, but how do you behave in the society, the sociocultural oppression that's where we bring school and education and when it extends there we have different activities that come from training science has its culture village traditions has its called had their culture there are different inclinations of culture but everything falls on the culture and then you have health physical health so we are going to talk about the primary causes of the endangering of the breed of Christians I'm talking about. When we talk about Christianity, let's look at the foundation of Christianity. Christ is the founder of Christianity, Jesus Christ. And how was his life? This is a whole broad scope, the life of Jesus. And anybody, when you talk about depth of commitment in Christianity, they'll ask you the question if they're not serious. Now, me, I key Jesus. I be Jesus. Because he, he, he so much loved the world that while we were yet sinners, he died the spotless lamb, an excruciatingly painful death on the cross. That is sacrifice of love. He said, greater love hath no man for his friends than this, to lay down his life. It's easier to die by a bullet in a gun than to die the way Jesus died. Imagine yourself tied behind. You know that they are going to tie you behind a car, drag you on the roads, and let everything possible pierce your body. How many of you are going to take that? And when I talked and spoke about the love of God, which I'm going to refer you to www.lmeansrelations.org, I shared about the love of God. I said the one thing that proves love, love is sacrifice. 
How many of you are ready to sacrifice everything you have because of your love for God? Then we can start talking about Christianity. When I shared that, I said the early Christians were willfully martyrs. The day you accept to be a Christian, your life is in danger. Are we facing that today? Is that what we're facing? This is the breed of Christians I'm talking about. Christ was the perfect and is the perfect example. Now let's talk about the early church. I'm talking about the first cause of the endangering. It's going to be governance policy. From church governance to national governance policies. It can endanger you as a special breed of Christian, the example that Jesus is proud about. The early church had a different system of governance when we read from Acts chapter 2 verse 42. All the believers, they ate together. They had everything in common. Remember, Peter preached and in a day 3,000 became born again. The believers had everything in common. They ate together. Some people sold their possessions and brought the proceeds to the apostles' feet. That was a system of church governance. When we flow and study the early church, there are specific things that happened that ought to be copied. I'm not talking about blind copy. I'm talking about understanding the success and progress of Christianity. The ministers themselves had a culture. The Christians had a culture. So the church had a governance system that kept the people on fire. And you will hear it says they met every day, they broke bread every day, they ate their meals together every day. It was a governance system of the church. It's called fellowship. There are three foundations on which every believer's life revolve. When one or other start failing, you start drowning. You start living in a just surviving mechanism than a thriving system. It's number one, the attitude of prayer. Number two, the attention to studies. Number three, the reception of fellowship. And your donation in fellowship. In modern time, the average believer worship themselves. They are, they are tied to their decision. They are tied to their preference. They are only committed when it's comfortable. The early church wasn't so. People sold their land, sold the things they have, brought the possessions. And we are talking at a time when it seems like many fake men of God have crept into the church and everybody is trying to be careful. You want to be careful? Oh yeah? Then you won't walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit of God and you won't need to be careful. So you have to be trained to walk by the Spirit. So first, these people walked in the Spirit. So when they lived together, the apostles were delivering and fear, the fear of God. So the governance policy of the church instilled the fear of God in the hearts of the people. The governance policy of the nation shunned the attention to Christianity in the lives of the people. But the church's power in its governance system and the words Christ left and the efficacy of the power of the Spirit was able to sustain the early church in a time when Christianity seemed to be a taboo. And, and, and receiving and accepting the life in Christ was accepting a death sentence. But this breed of Christians survived because of the governance policies of the church. I'm not talking about church dogma, church doctrine, church laws. I'm talking about the practice of spirituality. I'm talking about the practice of fellowship. I'm talking about the practice of solidarity. I'm talking about the practice of prayer. I'm talking about the practice of the spirit. How many of you, you watching me, how many days, how many days of the week have you thought of just being in the church premise 
like like David said, I was glad when they said we should go up to the house of the Lord that I might behold his glory. Do you, do you still have that kind of mindset? In a modern time, everybody has got just so busy that you want the service to close in the two hours frame that has been given. But these people love to spend their days in the presence and in the place of God. That was a governance. So that's the first thing. As it's changing, the species, this breed of believers begin to be endangered. And I want to share more with you in this light. When the governance of the nation doesn't support the stamina of the Christian, the church, by which the world itself is still functioning, otherwise everything would have gone out of course. The church has to instill. You, as a believer, have to understand that you stand in the position to defend the word of God that the government should bow down to. So be ready to oppose some policies of the government if it is contrary to the will of God for mankind. If we all accept to live in the liberties our hearts want to live into, the whole world will go in chaos. Don't tell me that when you are fasting you don't desire to eat. Not everything you desire has to be. Not everything that seems to be common has to be allowed to be common. We are facing a situation where the Western world has stacked a system of gay and whatever is involved in that as something that is natural. But when we find the word of God about it, it can't be. And so you have to stand with the will of God against it and help those who are sick to get well. That's just an example. We can deliberate on it. You may have things you want to do. You may have desires. But I tell you, Mature men have learned that allowing a child to go the way they want to go in as much as they have the desire and they are crying and you're uncomfortable is going to lead the child to a destructive future. And so we learn to stop children from their desires no matter how loud and how boring their cry are. And when it comes to the way God wants things to operate, we all seem to be like children and need to allow that divine hand, divine word, divine governance system to shut us up when we want to speak wrong and shut us down when we want to operate wrong. You need to allow it. Paul said all things could be permissive but not all things are profitable. All things work together for good to them that love God. When you are walking in the will of God, even if you meet danger, even if you make mistakes, as long as your heart is right, God can cause it to work for your good. He's a God that carries water in a basket to shame a basin. He's a God that is able to call for light out of darkness so we can't interpret our lives from the way we want to think. What is necessary and important is that your quest should be on obeying the will of God. So the first thing that causes the endangering of the species is the governance policy of nations and of the church. How is the church you fellowship encouraging you to grow? How is the nation in which you are encouraging the faith of men in God and in Christ Jesus? You need to stand the gap and be the one to defend it by challenging the policies through evidential actions and proofs. Break the rules when they need to be broken and prove the will of God when it has to be proven. Stand with God and not with men. Make up your mind. When the whole nation goes rogue against God, you stand for God and one man can stand and defend the truth of God's word as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood and opposed Nebuchadnezzar. I like the story and I pray that God gives me grace to oppose national policies that will contradict the nature of God in me. I'm praying and I pray you become that breed that when the nation is wrong, you stand and tell the nation is wrong. They said to Nebuchadnezzar, that's Old Testament, 
Oh king, let it be made known to you. We have a God who can save us. But even if he doesn't come, we are not bowing down to bow because he's no God. Nebuchadnezzar was angry. His face became red. He ordered for an increase in the punishment. Oh father, help your church. Help this one that is listening to me now. The world is stealing the hearts of many Christians. Father, I pray, oh God, help them. Help this one watching me that when everyone is giving way and asking themselves, am I Jesus? They would say, yes, I stand as his representative. Lord, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. May this one listening to me now receive an, an anointing. Let the gates of encounter be open. Where we are weak, you are strong. We have seen men who were discouraged. Father, I pray that wherever this one is sleeping, let them wake up from their sleep in the name of Jesus. Wherever they are dead in the faith, let it come back to life in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. I want us to take a few messages from those that are listening to us. We have trashed the first point about governance policy for the church and for the nation. I have a word here. Please, Pastor, pray for me for the spirit of prayer. I think I'm already praying for you for the spirit of prayer. Eric, I'm already praying for you for the spirit of prayer. I'm praying for God's strength to come on you. I'm praying for God's grace to be lavished on you more and more in the name of Jesus. I want to take SMS now. This one's wrote on WhatsApp. And if I'm taking the SMS, let's delve to the SMS and see those who are sharing with us. I have messages here. After Tyson, I have thanks very much for your message. My name is Beltha. My prayer request is, Reverend, please pray for my family so that we may live as one. I'm in Boya. Beltha, your family that you may live as one. I'm sharing from Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And I'd like you to share that with your family. Take it from verse 40, read right up to verse 44. It is necessary that we live together, not divided. You can also share with your family Psalm 133. It says, God loves it when brethren dwell together in harmony with one heart. Anybody that breaks the family is doing something contrary to God. If someone in your family feels like they are hurt, it's okay. If they want to leave themselves, it's okay. But we owe one another because of the life of Christ. We owe one another the duty, the responsibility to love. Love doesn't keep a record of wrongs. And I pray that the love of God will reign in your household. Lift your hands and pray with me. Father, I pray for the house, the family of Belthar. Grant them grace to live together as one. Let this word have spoken. Let the word that they will read. Let the word that he will send to them one-on-one -on -one, as you send them to messages. Let it touch their heart like a sword. Let it break the stone asunder. Let it break the rock hard heart in the name of Jesus. And let this family be one again, even as your early church was one in the name of Jesus. Amen. Better, I believe you're going to give a testimony. And I want to share more with your family members. If you can link them to me, we talk together. I share a word with you for you to give them. It will be nice. I'm receiving another message. Greetings, sir. An endangered species is one that is gradually becoming extinct. I agree with you that hot Christians are becoming few. But those seeking only for miracles are massive. That's a one ever. A one is contributing from Bokwai. I want to thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ewane, I want to say with you, you are also on the right point saying that those who are seeking for miracles are becoming massive and i want to let you know that it's not only christians that seek for miracles you can you can you can seek for the hand of god and not the face of god when you want to see the power of god in your life you you can see it but when you want to see the face of god is different from seeking the hand of god and Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 22 that many will say, did I not cast out demons in your name? Did I not do this and do that in your name? And he will say to them, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. I know you not. These are those who will covet the power of God, who will covet the operations of the spirit, but their hearts do not love God. Their hearts love the fame. Their hearts love the gain. Their hearts love the miracles that they want upon them, the increase. But their hearts 
are not after God. They will not sacrifice their pleasures for God. They would sacrifice their pleasures for their gain, but they wouldn't sacrifice their pleasures because of the love of God. If there is nothing they would get from preaching, they will not preach. If, they would, if there is nothing they would get from going into interior villages for crusades, sleeping around swamps, and all of these sacrifices that we can talk about, if there is nothing they will get, they will not go. But the breed of those I'm talking about are those whom, even when believing Christ is a death threat, and there is nothing that seems to be again in the world. And this mass of believers that go, who claim to be believers, that go after miracles, are those who are after God because of the gain, because of what they want to get, not what they want to give. I'm talking about a breed of Christians who are after God because of what they feel they can offer. A life that is given to God. Not how much they feel they can get by going to church. They don't go for a church service because they feel like, all right, Maybe the message for today is not powerful. They don't think of what their contribution means in a fellowship. So it's a broad perspective. Thank you for the contribution. And I have another message here. Uh, I think it's David. David says, good evening, pastor, and God bless you. David says, please pray for me so my spiritual life can grow more. He said, thanks so much, pastor. God bless you. The word is so powerful and, and leaning. And God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for blessing me, David. Thank you for blessing me. I pray that we will join together. I pray that we will share together. I pray that even after now, we are going to pray together. And I pray that your strength in fellowship, if you have a local church where you fellowship, I pray that your commitment will grow. And I pray that you will allow yourself to allow the church to help you grow. I pray that God will strengthen the mentors over you. If you don't have one, is going to provide. Oh, strengthen those over you to speak words in your life that would turn your life around in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, David. Let your life take another turn even after now that you are listening to this message. That you won't fit yourself into the endangered species. But you will be them who stand tall over time in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm receiving another message here from someone let's just take this please i'm hoping that i won't miss anyone's message before we run to the end of the broadcast he said uh the kingdom of god is only for those who are willing to die fighting for the kingdom in daniel chapter 11 verse 33 i love that scripture thank you for sending it thank you for this contribution he said we see that those who keep true to the ways of god will be in const in constant danger Again, in 2 Corinthians 4.11, we see the same thing. And those who wanted the easy way will crash out of the lane. Thank you very much. That's what I shared from Matthew chapter 7, verse, verse 13. And when we read that Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, verse 32 to 33, the verse 32 says, They that know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits for their God and continues to talk about those that, those that stay in the right doctrine doing activities for their God. Amen. It says, Daniel... Um, he says, God bless you and increase you. I'm Pastor Bongo Samuel of Ogospo Moliko. Oh, Pastor Bongo, thank you very much. And I believe watching this, you are praying for us. You are praying for all the audience. You are praying that the power of God fill them to the full wherever they are. You know, Moses prayed right out of the camp, but the spirit of prophecy caught two who were out of the camp. And Jesus was with many, but they went and found another one casting out demons. Wherever they are, where you sit, there is grace. I believe you would join me in these prayers that wherever those are listening and listening, there will be a touch in their spirit and there will be a reviving from the dead in the name of Jesus. There will be a waking up from slumber for those who are sleeping in the name of Jesus. We are praying for you. And you, my audience, you can see that many people are praying for you. You can see that other pastors are watching and there's intercession going on for you. So if you are making that decision to receive the life of Christ, if you are making that decision to become born again, you have to make it knowing that someone is praying for you. You were lost in a desert land, so dry and thirsty. You were yearning and thirsty for God, but you never found any way. Re remaining in addiction, suffering from the things you suffered, you're finding it difficult to turn back. There is strength for you today. And if you want to surrender to Jesus, I just want you to pray after me. I believe your heart is ready. And all you have to say is, Heavenly Father, thank you for your love, for it is you who loved me and sent Jesus Christ for me. Jesus, I can't take care of myself. I can't take care of my life. Today I accept you 
amidst all odds as the Savior and Lord of my life. My heart is your home. My life is yours as your life is mine. Amen. I want to thank God if you prayed that prayer with me. And I want you to send me a text message if you just did that. And I want to make you know, according to Romans chapter 8, we have a reading from verse 28, from verse 1. From verse 1 says, There is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There is no condemnation for you. No one can lay an allegation, an accusation against you. And I want to encourage you that you need to strengthen your fellowship with the saints, your prayer, and your understanding of the word of God. And I'm here to help you. You can see the number displayed on your screen. You can share with me. I'll be there to counsel. I'll be there to guide. And I'll be there to share with you when you have need in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Pastor Bongo. I hope we'll keep in touch. Okay. Bertha has sent thanks message. My prayer request is, Reverend, please pray for my family so that we may live together. Okay. That is from Bertha. We are having another message. Gre greetings to you, to you, sir. It's Kudi Princely Edan from Bokwango. Sir, please pray for me. I really want to serve God, but anything I take a bold step, I always go back, backward. Sir, I love God, so I need help. Yes, I pray that that strength is going to come. By strength shall no man prevail. And I would be there to share with you, where I'm going to share with you, what you need together is someone to pray with, a people to pray with, a people to go out with and, and stretch yourself, a people to study with, study rightly, study things that are important to your spirit and the right fellowship, the right folks that will boost up your faith. You need the right environment around you. And I'm going to share with you more. I believe you're going to keep in touch, Adan, so that I can share with you more by the grace of God that is upon my life. And I believe there will be a great blessing in that. Amen. All right, from Tyson. Permit me to take this from Tyson. Uh, I, wish, I wish you pray for me to have the heart to be close to Christ. Tyson, I pray, and I'm already praying for you, and I prayed for you before coming here. And I'm still going to be praying for you that the cares of this world will not take your heart. And we were going to continue sharing about the cause of this endangering. The second thing is about civilization, cultural civilization and scientific civilization, the media and science. And we are going to share on that. And I'm going to take this very serious and I'm going to be inviting some of my brethren, men of God with grace, to join me on set and in the next broadcast they are going to be here with me i'm so happy that you share with me shared with me i'm so happy that you sent your messages as i'm receiving another one good evening pastor i'm desireen from limbe i'm really enjoying your preaching may god bless you papa please pray for me so my spiritual life can grow success in education in the name of jesus i pray for you <coughs> i pray According to your request, your faith, God is too faithful to fail. He wants your heart. What he's yearning after is your heart. And he won't fail to garrison your heart. I pray you will keep the atmospheres of these messages. Jesus said those who received the word for the seed that fell on thorny ground, they started to grow, but the cares of this life choked them up. In our next session, I'm going to be sharing about how to handle the cares of this life. How to survive with Taking care of your basic necessities and still stand as a believer. You can't do it in your comfort zone. I'm going to be sharing with that. I'm going to be sharing on how to be a committed, excellent student and still be able to be a very prayerful student. Powerful Christian. I'm going to share with that. I'm going to be sharing on how to be a worker who is occupied maybe all day long with work and still being able to survive. You have to invest in your spiritual goal, growth. There are survivor tactics the Lord has given to me. And I'm going to be sharing with you. And this is what I plan to share here. How to, how to, how to conserve your breed. How to conserve yourself. How to keep thriving in a wicked world. And in a time when the love of many are waxing cold. And you can see that is the prayer request of many that are sharing with me. Oh Father, hear the cries of the heart of these people. There is a revival for them. 
And it shall be that everyone whose heart is yearning for you, Lord, you shall not leave them the way they are. Let a dimension of encounter be open. Oh, Holy Spirit, touch them from their homes. Touch them from their seats. Touch them wherever they are. Let grace come upon in the name of Jesus. In those seasons when they don't want to even 